Hey everybody, it's Rafi from Zurb coming at you with another lesson. Now we know that most websites are built on some sort of grid and we don't want to think of the grid as a restriction, rather something that can fit our content into any screen size in any manner that we need to. So today we're going to check out some really cool stuff you could do with the foundation grid that you may not know about. So let's check it out. All right. So one cool thing I want to show you right off the bat is how you can create a row and a column all in one element. So this is new to Foundation 6. If you're making a 12 column row, you can attach the row and the column class to a div and it's only one container to create that. So you have your padding and you have your maximum width. So inside of that, we can attach our other stuff. So we're going to create a header here. So, and then inside of that, we're also going to put some more uh, text in here. So we'll make like a subheader so you can kind of see what's happening. So basically what this did was create a full width 12 column row. Now the other cool thing is you can attach sizing classes to this and it'll automatically center your row and shrink this down. So this text is a little too long and it needs to be chunked together a little bit better. So let's go ahead and attach a medium dash nine uh, class to this row column. Now you see that it constrains the width of the row. Now we can actually do this here so we can make this a large dash nine. And then on medium, we can even make this a seven or something narrower. So you can see, based on different screen sizes, that the width changes. So typically we'll do a medium 9, we'll do a large 7. So there you go. Now we have something that is a little bit more constrained nicely, and the text is a little bit more readable. And then on medium, it still stays that way. And then on small, since we didn't define any sizing, it's going to go ahead and automatically size full width. Okay, so now we have this form and we have this order summary section here on the left. So based on screen size, it can change width obviously and become full width on small, which makes sense for this type of setup. But we actually, in our designs, we have this summary section on the right. So we can actually do that with foundations classes. So we'll actually find the row and the column. So here it is. It's a large four column and it's a medium six column as well. So what we'll do is we'll actually use foundations offsets to push this over. So for a medium screen and larger, we'll offset this column. Now, if this column is four columns wide, the total width of the, of the row is containing 12 columns. So the remainder is eight columns. So that's actually what we want to offset this column by. We want to offset it by eight, which means to push it over from the left, eight columns. So now you see that it lines up perfectly on the right and you only needed one class to do that. Something else you can do is you can also center columns. So let's actually change this We'll make this a large offset eight. So it's only going to offset on the large screen and we'll do medium centered. So if I do medium centered, that means on a medium screen, now I'm going to have this column centered on a large screen. I'm going to have it offset to the right. And then on a small screen, it'll fill full width. So you have large offset eight, or any amount of columns that you need to offset by within 12. And then you can also center columns uh, using the either small dash center, medium dash center, or large dash center class. All right, so speaking of pushing content or columns over from the left, we can actually push or pull columns using foundations push or pull classes. So in this case, we have this nice image here on the left and we have this card-like component, which is actually a callout on the right. And they're both in columns. So we want to 
push the left column over a bit so that way the right column lays on top of it. So we can actually do that using foundations push and pull classes. So for a medium screen and larger, so we'll do medium dash push dash one. This is all relative from the left side of the screen. So now it's gonna push away from the left side of the screen the amount of one column or the width of one column. So as you can see here, not only does it push the column over, but it allows the other column to lay on top. So now we have this cool overlay effect uh, that's created. And with a little bit of CSS, we kind of vertically align that. So foundations push and pull classes, you can use you know, up to 11 columns of pushing, uh, just depending on how much overlap you'd want to get. Now, if you were doing this for source ordering, you can actually push the right column all the way over six columns and then pull the left column over by six columns. So that would be medium dash pull dash six. And so if you did that, now you can see that they swap positions. And finally, what I wanted to show you was how you can remove the padding between columns based on screen size. So we have a bunch of little cute puppies here and they're all uh, spaced apart by the column gutter or the column padding. Now, if you put a class of collapse on the parent container, which is the row, you can actually remove all the padding inside of the columns. So I just put the class of collapse on this row, and this is actually a block grid. So all the columns inside of this row will lose their padding. So the class of, the, the class of collapse actually removes the padding for all screen sizes, but foundation is responsive, so you can actually do this based on screen size. So let's do small dash collapse. And so it's only gonna collapse on a small screen now. As you can see here, there's no spacing in between the pictures. Now we wanna also on medium, we wanna specify uncollapse. That means we're gonna override the mobile first behavior of small collapse. And we're gonna say that on a medium screen, we want you to have that padding in between. So now we have this even spacing. But now on a large screen, we want to collapse again. Well, we can do that with the large collapse class. So you can see how we can remove and add padding back in and remove it based on screen size. So you have large collapse, large uncollapse, medium collapse, medium uncollapse, small collapse, small uncollapse, and of course the collapse class which affects every screen size. Cool, so we just learned how to make a row column, how to shift content left and right, depending on screen size, how to overlap two columns, and how to remove gutters based on screen size. So there's a lot more that you could do with the responsive grid. And if you're looking for a deeper dive, check out our intro to foundation class. And stay tuned next week for another great lesson.